butterflies have been coming here for a long time and we didn't even know when the migration started, you know. Mm -hmm. So only since like 1975, you know, when National Geographic gave it to the world, this this beauty, you know, it's like, yeah. how do you say it? It's one of the wonders of the world. Totally. You know? Yeah. To get to this wonder is a trek of about three hours of driving west of Mexico City, a one hour plus horse ride steep up a mountain, and then huffing and puffing, hiking through the mud at an elevation of about 10,000 feet. Yeah, the atmosphere is about a tenth of what it is in Minnesota. So you're breathing. And I remember um, that I walk in the forest and, and, and it was huge, huge trees, you know, and I haven't seen trees like that anymore in that side. Uh, the trees not, not, not older than 10 years old, you know, so the trees very small. The bigger, older trees also work to protect the monarchs. When I was little, uh, it used to be a lot of butterflies everywhere, like flying around here in the town. In the town even? In the town yeah. here, yeah, because here we have Cerro Pelon. So you would say there are definitely fewer butterflies now than there was 30 years ago? Yeah, it is uh, less butterflies. Um, now, uh, this year the population is getting better, you mm -hmm. know, compared to the year before and the year before, you know. But still, you know, it's like, it's nothing compared to what it used to be <clears throat> like 30 years ago. Yeah. I told a lot of people, you know, um, when we talk about climate change and all the global warming, mm -hmm. and, and, and you know, like sometimes it's cold here because we are high altitude. And when I talk to people, they say, oh, what are you talking about? Yeah. It's, it's cold. But no, it's like what I'm trying to uh, make people understand, you know, the, uh, when we get raining, it rains really, really bad. It seems like the same thing, you know, every year, you, you, you know what to expect. And now, predictable. yeah, it was yeah. more predictable. In fact, our first night in Macheros was very stormy. And we were told the day before, large hail even fell out of some of the storms. The result littered the forest floor everywhere around us. So, well, and, and the monarchs are, as we've seen firsthand, they're very sensitive to temperature. You know, the difference between a couple degrees means they they don't fly or they do fly. Yeah. And that also affects their breeding, doesn't it? Yeah. How early or how late they, they mate? Yeah, if uh, the butterflies, you know, uh, they're really, really active, it's not good for them because they're burning a lot of calories. And if it's, it's hot, it's not going to be that many flowers. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know... It's not nectar, so you, you will see higher mortality because you can see like they, they get skinny and, yeah. and they will die. So, so yeah, it's affecting the butterflies. Here in Mexico, we, I'm going to keep trying to do my part. His part is running tours and his family run bed and breakfast. I see the difference having tourists here. You can see when people uh, rent horses and all that stuff. I can see uh, the faces, they're happy, you know, it's like, you know, I told you the presence of the people there is if, if safe, uh, the forest, you know. Yeah. Another thing is coming to a place like Macheros, right? Yeah. And seeing yeah. them. When you come to Macheros, you know, it's um, when you come here, um, you take a tour with us or you rent a horse. Even like people can come and not take a tour with us. But if you hire a local people, mm -hmm. they, it's, a, it's a way to help the community. By investing in the rural communities, you not only help the people, but you also help the monarch butterflies by helping to protect their forest home. I think, you know, probably we're going to die and the butterflies, they're going to keep <laughs> coming back. 